Just think about this for a minute. This is how good we could have it. We live in a country with all these millions of acres of land where we can come out here and camp for free for 14 days. Come out here, have fun, don't pay a dime. And it's so easy just to pick up your trash when you leave, throw it in the car with you or the truck or the van or the RV, whatever you're in, take it to a dumpster somewhere and dispose of it. That's all you gotta do and don't overstay 14 days it's so simple and so easy, but so many people just can't seem to do it. Oh my, look at this. I needed this. I was so tired of the low desert, just been waiting for the weather to get a little warmer. I'm slowly making my way up to the trees and the mountains. This is what I needed. I have never stayed so long in the low desert, but the weather this year has been weird, just staying colder for so much longer. But it's finally getting too hot there, so my migration has officially begun. Check out this Choya. C-H-O-L-L-A, but it's pronounced Choya, because the double L. They look so fluffy from a distance, but when you get up on them, you'll see all the thorns that they have. Some people call them teddy bear cactus because from a distance they look so fluffy. But look at all these thorns that they have. And they drop these balls off of them, kind of like sweet gum balls. But they're way more dangerous. I've stepped on one before. That was a couple of years ago. And at first I thought I had been bit by a snake. I couldn't believe how painful that was. But now I know about the fluffy looking but dangerous choya cactus. There's a place not far from here in Joshua Tree National Park. Like if you're on the I-10 exit and go north into the park and about halfway up to where all the campgrounds are, you'll go through a place called Choya Gardens. And I think it's the most dense area of Choya cactus anywhere in the country. But make sure you wear some good hiking shoes. But anyway, the place is awesome, and the campsite is primo. The wind is picking up, but the weather's great. I mean, I really timed it out perfectly. I'll probably put this video up on Saturday or Sunday, and then I'll slowly migrate on up to higher elevation. I had hung out around Havasu for a while. I really liked the lake, and I liked the town itself. And I did get to see Yellow Wolf. She's back on the road and we camped together for a while. It's always great to see her. She's got such a good vibe. But the camping around Havasu, it's just so sketchy. It's just too many people strung out. It, you know, I don't know what the future of the place is. I did talk with some rangers that came by for a good 30 minutes or so. And they told me exactly where the problem areas are. They said certain areas i don't guess i should name them maybe that's not going to really be beneficial but the ranger said there are a few areas that have always been a problem around havasu and he directed me up to the areas where he thought would be better and i just kind of picked their brain about things and it was a good meeting some of the stuff they told me blew my mind about the understaffing you wouldn't believe the low number of rangers per district. It's insane. I don't even know if I should broadcast it or not. But they were running two rangers per truck. I have never seen that before in my life where two rangers are in one truck. And you know what the reason for that is? Because they're running into so many crazy aggressive people that want to fight that they don't want to send just one guy out there in the middle of the wilderness alone. So... There's two rangers in each truck now for certain districts. That's just insane. I don't know what's happened to the world. What has happened to humanity where people are just so trashy and they're just so hostile to society? It's really crazy. Just think about this for a minute. This is how good we could have it. We live in a country with all these millions of acres of land where we can come out here and camp for free for 14 days. Come out here, have fun, don't pay a dime. And it's so easy just to pick up your trash when you leave, 
throw it in the car with you or the truck or the van or the RV, whatever you're in. Take it to a dumpster somewhere and dispose of it. That's all you got to do. And don't overstay 14 days. It's so simple and so easy. But so many people just can't seem to do it. They want to move out here and act like it's their property, overstay the limit, and trash it up, and then have the audacity to have some kind of disdain for the authority that governs the place. It's it's unbelievable how good we could have it if people could just obey the rules. And there's not many rules, if you think about it. It's They're not asking much of you just to be a decent human being. But society, humanity has just decayed so much. It's so pathetic. And so many people now want to scream, my rights, my rights. Well, I remember in school we were taught our rights, but there's another thing nobody seems to mention anymore. Remember the class called Rights and Responsibilities? Remember the responsibilities part? Nobody seems to remember that anymore. And that's pathetic. What we've got is a bunch of spoiled, entitled brats. This is public land. It is to be cherished. You can come out here and camp for 14 days for not spending a penny. Totally free. All you got to do is pick up your trash when you leave. So the next guy, when he pulls in to enjoy the land, he doesn't have to deal with your trash and your drug paraphernalia that you just can't seem to pick up and dispose of. Now, the good news is, in Arizona, I never encountered that. But two summers ago, when I was in Northern California and in Washington, I would say about 50% of the campsites that I went to, and these were all free campsites in the National Forests, and there was hypodermic needles and syringes just laying on the ground. That is totally unacceptable. That is a public health issue. Unbelievable. I can't, I couldn't believe it. And Kevin can vouch for me because this is when I was camping with Kevin. We were all over the Pacific Northwest. But Northern California and Washington, there was a few places in Oregon we ran into this. And the encampments up in the forest, just squalor, trash everywhere, uh, feces, it, unbelievable. I mean, just animal-like stuff going on. So, yeah, I'm on a rant. I get it. I'm going, to, I'm going to continue. I don't care. No more coddling these people. I understand they're addicted, and I feel for them, but we have coddled them long enough. They are selfish. They are trashing the land. They're causing a public health issue. Think about a nice family coming out. They want to camp. They got kids running around. And you think they want their kids running across some needle lead on the ground that's been stuck in some guy's vein? No way. No thank you. I am part of a silent majority and we will be silent no more. Most of us are playing by the rules and doing things right. It's just a fraction of the people causing the problems. And another thing, it's not a class issue. It's not upper class, lower class. has nothing to do with that. It is drugs, hard drugs. I'm talking heroin, meth. And another thing, you can blame the people in power who are enabling this whole mess to go on. I can hear it in the comments now. It's the poor people. It is not the poor people. I don't have much money. I'm poor, but I'm proud, and I'm clean, and I'm respectful. It has nothing to do with your level of finance. It is drugs. Hard drugs is the issue. It makes people lose their freaking minds. I'm not talking about marijuana. I mean, I've done that myself. Not my thing, but I know tons of people who do, and they are the nicest people I've ever met. That is not what I'm talking about at all. Now, there's one other thing it could be also. It's called no home training. It's really a southern term we used to use for people that just don't know how to act. Or maybe they're just upset about things that have happened in the past in their, in their life. Well, I'm not too happy about things that's happened in my life either, but it's no sense in being a little bitch about it. But the bottom line is, in the USA, public lands 
it's just amazing. All you got to do is follow the simple rules and it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. And I'll close with this. I've had a few comments before saying that YouTubers are the ones who are ruining public lands. You are so wrong. YouTubers are the ones who are doing everything by the book. Now, one issue that you may have a case on is that we tend to share these locations, but we're expecting people to come out here and behave. You know, we're not expecting people to come out here and act like animals and trash the place. But with that being said, I am going to be more careful about sharing locations because I just don't want to be lumped in with that. Okay, rant is over. That is it. That's all I've got for you. Check in in a couple of days. Thanks for watching. Take care, be well, and smash the bell. Mm -hmm.